Hi and welcome to C Programming. In today's class we will do a array processing example. So let's read the question and start to solve the problem. So first of all, let's open our question. So let's start from the top. A menu-driven C program is required to offer array processing operations that apply to one array of size 10 defined in your main function. The menu must always be redisplayed on a new screen until the user selects the exit option. User do while. Well. It must be capable of performing the following processing operations as requested by the user. User switch case on the array. Okay, number one, display the entire array in a tabular format. Two, populate or fill the entire array with randomly generated integer values in the range of minus 100 to 100. Three, allow the user to enter or input all the values to populate the entire array. And four, allow the user to change one specific value in the array. And five, display the following array value statistics, maximum, minimum, amount of positive values and amount of negative values amount of neutral values that's our zero values and the average value accurate to two decimal places after the comma furthermore um, above mentioned requirements for your program it must also allow the user to terminate the program one um, from the last menu option the program must also validate the user menu choice input it must be between one and six with adequate feedback display invalid input if the user entered an invalid menu option okay so invalid input must be displayed if a invalid menu option was selected your program must repeatedly ask if the user for input should any invalid input be given by the user refer to the accompanied showcase executable file um, we don't have that for our your program should perform okay so we will look at the print screens okay Okay, so let's quickly have a um, check here. Here's a compulsory variables and arrays for your programs. Okay, this is just a, um, the variables that we need. We need a choice variable. That can, that's going to be our user menu choice. We need a values to store 10 values. So it's an integer array. We need a max, minimum, positive amount, negative amount, a zero. That's our um, neutral numbers. Sum. Okay, we need to go and calculate the sum in order to calculate the average. Okay, so let's look at the print screen. So if we say display the array, an array must be displayed. If two is um, selected, populate array randomly. Random numbers must be populated into the array. If we select three, populate array manually, we need to do manual population. For each value one two three four to ten and then if four is selected um, change a single value the current values are this and which value do you want to change so one to ten what is the new value and then we give any value between zero or minus 100 to 100. thereafter we can also say five four show statistics and then lastly, if we press nine, it's going to be invalid. So anything other than one to six is going to be invalid. And then if we want to end, we will just select six, exit the program. Okay. This is also just uh, to show that if we enter values, which value do you want to change? Zero. So which value do you want to change? One. So this needs to be repeated okay so a value zero is not we don't have a value zero it's a value one to ten and which value do you want to change so we need to give a correct answer here and what is the new value 900 so that's also out of the range so we can't do that out of the range so it needs to keep on asking you until you enter a number that's inside the range okay and that's it so let's just keep this one open Oops, see Daisy. It's now locked here. So I'm just going to keep it small here on the side. 
and then we're going to open code blocks okay so I'm going to keep it here on the side great so here is our question and let's start at the beginning so we will create a new empty file and we will save this as solution solution one on our desktop dot c okay and then we will start with our basic hash include oops no where's the sd Okay, stdio.h, that's our standard input and output library. We will do int main void and return zero. So we will save this, build and run. Okay, and as you can see, the program executed successfully, so we can go on. Okay, so first of all, we need to go and display array processor menu. So we're going to say array, oops, print it first. And we're going to say array processor menu, new line. Okay. And then print if student number. Okay, and our student number is going to be one, two, three, four. And then we're going to do another print F. And we just need to add two new lines there. One, two. And then we're going to say our menu. So I'm going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, four, five, six. So number one, we're going to say display array, new line. Next up, we're going to say populate array randomly. Oops, a daisy. New line. Three, it's going to be populate late array manually new line so if you can't see there let's quickly zoom just in next up four we will say change single array value then five we're going to say show array this fix okay and it's going to be maximum i'm not going to do that six exit program okay so new lines for each of them and there's going to be a double new line at the end here and then we're going to say our choice Okay, so if we quickly zoom out, what we will have is our main function and just the basic displays. So we will start to now do everything. So let's quickly check print F. Uh, the problem here is a semicolon. Great, there's the problem. So if we run this now we will get something like this so this is our menu so what we can see from this example is this menu needs to be repeated um, if the user makes a selection so if we go back to the question and we quickly zoom in here what you will see is um, if we quickly go a little bit up here, select exit option. The menu must always be redisplayed, redisplayed on a new screen until the user selects the exit option. So it says here user do well. So what this will mean is we are going to repeat this function until the user selects 
six. So this or this display, we're going to repeat this display unit until the user selects six. So what we will do is we will go and create our first variable that they ask from us, our choice variable, and it's going to be a char. So we're going to say choice. And then what we will do is we will actually go and get the input from the user. And so we will say choice is equal to gauge. And we will just go and print out that input value as well. Percentage C. And we will print out choice. Okay. And we're going to add a new line. So what this now will do is if we run this, there will be a input and if we input something it's gonna end but now we get the input and what we will do now is we will put this whole um, menu inside a while do while so i just want to make, make sure yes they said a do while do while so what we will do is we will create a do while statement okay and inside this do while statement will be the following code. So I'm going to place it inside my do while statement. And now remember to do your indentation. So one tab space. And then my while statement at the end, I'm going to say while the choice. Okay. While the choice is unequal to the six. Okay. So let's quickly see what this will do to our program now. So if we build and run. Okay, it's just taking a little bit of a while on my side. There it is. So we're going to say one, it's going to read display two. Okay, let's drag a bigger three, four and so forth. Okay, but the question also said on a new screen until the user selects the exit option so each time a selection was completed we need to go and clean our um, display and how we do this is quite simple we can use this following statement system okay and inside this function we can just say cls and this will clear the screen for us okay and then if we press one it's gonna clean 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 so you can see there's something happening but it's not um, stopping okay so what we can do is we can add another gauge at the end here and what this gauge will do it's going to stop the program for input until we are um, ready to go to the new screen. So now what you will see is, oops, let's keep it this size. And I'm going to say one, it's going to wait. And then I can press any button. Then it's going to ask me again, two, and it's going to wait. Three, and I press space bar. So what we can do is we can then stop the um, while loop for a at this point here so that the user can actually see what's going on okay so back to our question so we've got choice and we use choice now to do our um, selection of one two three four five six and then the question said use a switch case um, on the array oh, not on the array sorry um, it must be capable of performing the following processing operations as requested by the user so we need to use a switch case in order to do those operations on the array so what we will do is we will then say switch and we're going to use the choice variable as our switch so we will say in case it's a one we're going to do something and i like the indentation there okay 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this a few times. Oops, lazy. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then six. But then we also need a invalid entry, default. And default will help us to do invalid entries. Okay. Then we can add a break statement for the default as well. We quickly need to do one thing as well. Choice is a character. So we can't say one, two. So we need to say one like this. And two and three as well. Okay. So I'm just going to back up this spacing there. Okay. So in case it's a one character, we do the following, etc., etc., etc. Okay. And that's it. So our switch case will then determine what's the choice the, act the user actually made. And if it's a... Um, if the user made the choice six, um, we can just say maybe uh, by just for now, just to see that there's actually feedback. And then what we can do is we can go and run our program. We can select one. It's not going to do anything. Two, not going to do anything. Three, four, five six bye bye and the program ends okay so now we've got our switch case that will do our um, this or make the decision between the operations that we need to do one two three four or five okay so the first one is display the entire array in a tabular format so let's go back to our variables we need to create an integer array called values so let's go and create that integer array so we say int values and this array is going to be 10 big and i'm going to initialize the whole array to zero okay and we need to initialize everything to zero just in the beginning because the array the array will be displayed if the user selects one the first time he can't display nothing so there's going to be just zeros now inside that array so how do we display the array? So let's go to our selection one. And we display an array by using a loop structure. And we're going to use a for loop to do this. Now for loops are counter-controlled repetition. And part of those four rules of counter-controlled repetition, we need to have a counter variable. We need to initialize that counter variable. We need to have a condition and we need to increment. Okay, so let's quickly go and create that counter variable so int i okay so we have a counter variable we're going to do our for loop and we're going to initialize our counter variable our counter variable is going to be smaller than and the size is 10 so we're going to start at 0 for the first index and then smaller than 10 and then i increment okay and then we're going to display the array so it's only going to display this for loop so we didn't have to have curly brackets. It's going to be one line of code. And what we're going to do is we can say percentage D tab space. Okay, so in a nice manner, we're going to space everything out and we're going to say values. Okay, and we're going to say I inside values so that we can go through each of the elements. So I will be first zero, so we're going to display values index zero then one then two until we get to nine okay so then we break and we're done oops save so let's quickly run this okay there's one small mistake okay error expected statement before just want to quickly check up oh, there's one extra bracket there see if we run this now We've got our program here and we're going to display and there's all the values okay 
So it's zero, 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 zero. Okay, so the array is empty. Okay, next up, what's the second one? Populate the entire array with randomly generated integer values in the range of minus 100 to 100. Okay, now do we do that? So it's also quite easy. What we need to go and do is we need to go and um, include a library called stdlib.h. Now inside this library is the random function and what we also include is the time um, library, time.h, because we're going to use time um, of the computer to randomize our um, our rand function that's in our standard library so that it's just more random. So if you don't know how and why we do this, go and look at the video with random numbers. So what we're going to do is in the beginning, we're going to call the randomize function and we're going to use time and the parameter is null to randomize the time and the rand function. Okay, so this is not generating a random number for us. It's only randomizing the rand function. Okay, and then what we will do is when we go to um, the second case, case it's a two, what we're going to do is I'm going to display first and we're going to say generated values. Okay generated values and then after this what we will do is we will use a for loop and this for loop is going to be the same as the previous one smaller than 10 oh, we can take away that spacing and now i'm going to have brackets because what i'm going to do is i'm going to display okay i'm going to display but before I display, I'm going to generate a random value for each of the values in the array. And how we will do this is by using the rand function. And we're going to say rand. And then random values between minus 100 and 100. So in total, it is 201 values meaning from minus 100 to 100, it's going to be um, 201 values. If minus 100 is included, to 100. So what we will say is we're going to say um, 201. So mod 201. And then we're going to add, or not add, we're going to subtract. And we're going to subtract 100. So this will give us 201 values, and then the values will start from minus 100. Okay. And that's how we will create um, values from minus 100 to 100. Now, if you build and run this, let's see what happened. Is first of all, we can display. There's nothing to display. Okay. Then we can say two. These are randomly generated numbers. Daisy. Okay, and then if we display again, there it is again. So what we can do is um, after our display, we can add a new line if you would want to. Okay, but it's not necessary. Then next up, we can fill the values. Um, the user can enter um, input for all the values in the array. So how would we do this? Okay, so first of all, what we will do is we will give some output. So this is in case three. And what we will do is we will say print if, and we're going to tell the user, enter array values. Okay, and enter values between minus 100 to 100. 
new line. Great stuff. Okay, so if we zoom out a bit, then what we will do is we will then say for loop and we're going to enter 10 values. So we're going to do another counter control repetition here, I plus plus and brackets. So what we will do now is we will tell the user print if, print if, enter value percentage d okay so enter the value and if you go and look at the output okay here you will see we will display enter value one so our for loop starts at zero so what we will do is we will say i plus one okay and then we will get some values from the user and let's use a scan if statement with um, integers and we will get the values okay this variable there it's our array and we will say for i so we will enter values for each of these so we are not yet done with three i first want to quickly show you something so if we press three now it's going to ask us to enter values. So let's say enter 1, 2, um, 100 is fine, minus 100 is fine, but 150 is not allowed, but it's going on. So that's a problem, and we need to go and check for that. We, we cannot have 150 inside our array. We need to check for that. And how we would do this is we will use a while loop now how we will do this is i'm going to say a do while and what i'm going to say is while okay while the values okay the values of i is smaller than okay one minus 100 so while the values okay the array values i is smaller than minus 100 or okay and we're going to say or the values i is bigger than 100 now why do we do this now the reason is we're going to repeat this print if and scan if statement if the um, value that the user entered is outside the boundaries and here with this we're checking if it's outside the boundaries if it's smaller than 100 or bigger than 100 so if it's smaller than minus 100 or bigger than 100 it's outside the boundaries and we will ask again Okay, so this will keep on asking until the user actually enters a correct value. So let's quickly build and run. Okay, so we're going to say populate array manually. So 1 will be accepted, minus 100 will be accepted, 100 will be accepted, but 150 will not be accepted and the user will need to enter another answer. Minus 100 and 5 will not be accepted. 100 will be accepted 5 50 90 minus 90 but 102 will not be accepted 1 and 2 okay so that's how we check for invalid inputs okay so with that do while we will check then for the invalid inputs okay so next up let's quickly go back up next up we will have allow the user to change one specific value in the array okay and that's actually also quite easy okay i'm just going to zoom out a little bit here the program is getting a little bit bigger okay next up so the user will be able to input um, a specific value inside the array so if we go down to our display what we will do is we will display all the values in the array. OK, 
Okay, and how we do this is we can use this actual for loop here. Okay, this will print out all the values. But before we print out, we're going to say the current values are. So we're going to say print if, and we're going to say the current values. Okay, so we print out the current values. Okay, and then after this, we will have then the following. I'm going to add a new line there. And then what I will uh, double in. What I will do is now I will do this do while idea again. This idea here. So what I will do is I will copy this and it's going to do the exact same thing again, but not exactly. We're going to tweak it a little bit. So what we will do is we will say do um, and then it's going to print if the following which value do you want to change so we're going to ask which value to change okay so the user needs to give a index now okay so a index we're not going to display anything so the user will need to give an index there and then by using our um, do while we will actually get an index from the user okay and then to get the input the index we need to go and create a variable to capture the index so if we go back to our table here you will see we will need a oh it's not there so let's go and create a value for index okay just want to quickly check yes we will create a we need to have that variable and then if you go down, we will then go and say store that inside index. Then when we have the appropriate index, okay, and the appropriate index will be if the value is smaller than one or bigger than 10. Okay, so our indexes will be one to 10. Okay, and then if we have the appropriate index, we will then go and change the value and then we need to get an appropriate value so that will be exactly this and then what we will do is we will say this do while again so the first do while will give us the appropriate index the next do while will give us the appropriate value and where will we store that inside index minus one remember now um, our indexes in our array starts from zero and we're now asking one to ten so we just need to add minus one there okay so what we're going to do is then we're going to repeat this until we have the correct input for that specific um, array index so let's quickly run this and see how this will work. So now let's say populate the array randomly and then we will want to change, change a single value. Okay, and there's all the values, the current values. Okay, so let's quickly go and check if our current values. Oh, shucks, no, we needed to display value one, etc., etc. So let's quickly go up. We need to say, value percentage d and then the value so we will display i plus one and then values so we say i plus one because it's zero plus one is one so the first value is one okay so let's quickly build and run oops no before we build and run we need to make it a new line okay so I'm running and then I'm going to populate randomly um, and then say change single array value. Okay, so we, there we have our single array values and then which value do you want to change? I want to change index 15. There is no index 15, so we can't do that. So let's change index 10. 
Okay, which value do you want to change? We can't say index 10. Ah, so we've got a slight little problem here. Okay, so we want to change index 10. Okay, but we can't because we are actually now checking values i. So we had a copy and paste mistake here. So we need to say index there and index there because this do well checks for the index so let's quickly build and run again and as you can see it takes some time so we populate randomly and then i'm going to change manually i'm going to say index 11 we can't but index 10 we can then enter a value for 11. ah so what we do now is we are entering 11. Enter the value for 11. So as you can see here, enter the value for i plus 1. So if we can't do that, we need to say index. Okay, enter the value for index. So this is also incorrect. So we do the enter the value for index. Okay, and we build and run again. So we're going to say populate randomly for and let's do 10 now again enter the value for 10 yes that's correct and i'm going to change it to 99 enter the value for 10 so 99 is a problem okay so now what we can see with our copy and paste mistakes here is we need to check for values index minus one okay so as you can see it's always uh, or not always a good idea to copy and paste so let's build and run again last time let's hope number four is working so randomly then change a value and then i'm going to change 10 enter value for 10 i'm going to say change it to 99 then we're done so let's quickly display and check the last value is 99 so our case for four worked great and lastly let's quickly do our last one and this one needs the following variables max min position or positive sorry negative zero sum and average so we need to go and quickly go and create a few variables here okay and let's do it so in max i'm going to initialize it to zero and then min equal to zero positive equal to zero negative equal to zero zero equal to zero sum equal to zero and average equal to zero okay so now we have max min position a positive sorry negative zero sum average okay so I just want to check that we can declare the variables okay so there's no problems everything is good so we've got all our variables and what we now do is we will then create our array statistics under five so first of all what we will say is print f and it's going to be array statistics okay and what we're going to do is we're going to declare well, first let's start with our the for loop and what this for loop will do is we will say i is smaller or i is equal to zero and then also i is smaller than 10 and then i plus plus and this is going to be a quite a big for loop for us okay then after this we're going to um, display all the, our statistics so what we will do is i'm going to set the max value to be equal to the first value inside the array okay and i'm going to set the min value as well to the first value of the array this is just to set it to the first one meaning that i'm going to assume that the max value in the beginning is the first element and then i'm going to search and update max until i have the max value and the same for min then what i'm going to do is 
Inside the for loop, I'm going to go and calculate the sum. So I'm going to say sum is equal to sum plus the values for i. So there we go and calculate our sum. Then I'm going to have an if statement for our max value. So I'm going to say if values i is bigger than max. So if the current value in the for loop that we're traversing through is bigger than max, we're going to update max to that value. Okay. And we're going to do the same for the minimum. So we're going to say if values i is smaller than min, we're going to update min to that specific value. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do our positive, negative, and our um, neutral or zero values. So we're going to say if, if the values i is bigger than zero, we're going to say positive, we increment positive. Else if, okay, so, or we can just say if, but it's not, it's the same thing. So if it's smaller than zero, we're going to say negative. We're going to update our negatives. So we're going to in increment our negatives and the same for zero. And we're going to say if values i is equal to zero, we're going to increment our zero. And that will enable us to count then for all um, the positive, negatives, and zeros by using these if statements, the last three. The first two is for our minimum and maximum. Okay, after this, we are done with the statistics. Now we just need to go and actually display the statistics to the user. And then what we will do is we will create, we'll do a quick calculation and we're going to create or calculate the um, oh, no. we're going to type cost the sum and we're going to divide it by i now i will be 10 okay so we're going to divide by i and then we've got our average so what we will do now is we're going to have the printf statement a few of them actually and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this. So it's maximum, minimum, positive, negative, zero, and the average. Okay. So let's say max. Max is going to be, and let's, let's put in a nice spacing, percentage D, and it's going to be comma max. Then min, it's going to be percentage d min and then positives and that's going to be positive negatives and then hopefully I haven't made a typing mistake and we have no errors Percentage D, that's our zero, and then lastly our average. Percentage D and average. Okay, and that's how we go and do all the statistics for this array. So let's quickly check. We've got an error here. Um, values undeclared first time use. So it's the array is called values. Okay. Okay, let's check. Can't see any errors. Okay, it's running. And let's populate array randomly. Okay, there's the array. It's populated randomly. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. And then let's do the statistics. Let's say five. And the statistics was 
72 is the biggest, minus 92 is the smallest. So let's quickly go and double check. 72 the biggest, minus 92 the smallest. So let's print out. 92 is the smallest and 72 is the biggest. Yes, that's perfect. So our statistics again. Then 6 positive and 14 negative. Hmm. Okay, so why is that a problem? Okay, so there cannot be 20. So if if the positive values are 6, the negative values must be 4. So there's a small problem there. And 0 is 0. So 0 negative values. So let's quickly go and check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's 7 negative values. So we know that our positive and negative is not working as it should. Okay, so what is the problem here? So let's quickly go and check. Um, and the actual solution is actually quite easy to see if you um, know what you're doing. But let's quickly see if we can systematically identify it. So what we do here is we determine the positive and we increment, increment, increment each time we find it. But where does it start? So in the beginning of the program, we, we initialize negative, um, zero, minimum, and positive, all, the, all these statistic variables to zero. We initialize them to zero. But each time we go and calculate the um, array statistics, we need to initialize them again to zero. Otherwise, they're going to just start or keep on incrementing. So what we need to go and do is all these we need to go and initialize before we do our statistics again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this all in one line. And now I'm going to save this. Let's quickly run our program again. And now let's see what's going on. So we're going to populate randomly. I'm going to make it bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to say display, there's it. Okay, let's quickly count how many um, positive numbers do we have. One, two, three, four, five. So five positive numbers and one, two, three, four, five negative numbers. So let's go and check if the statistics will do that for us. Five positive, five negative. Let's run it again. Five positive, five negative run it again so you see before we start to calculate the amount of positives and negatives we initialize the positive and negatives to zero okay so that's important and the average is minus three so you can do the calculation and check if minus three is correct and then if we want to press nine nine is invalid so let's quickly go and check if it's default and if it's a default we need to say invalid input then quickly run it again let's check for invalid input invalid input invalid in oh, one is valid um, minus one eight is invalid okay so we cannot enter invalid input okay and that's it if we're done we say bye bye and the program ends and that's it. That's our array um, processing um, example. Um, it's quite a big um, program. As you can see, there's quite a few things that we did here. But go through it again, watch it, make sure that you understand how to work with the array, how to do the statistics, how to display, and how to alter values in the array by using the indexes. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.